let's look ahead a little bit to the United States women's national team versus England. You've got USA versus the Lionesses. You've got the mm -hmm. reigning 2019 World Cup champions going up against the European champions. Um, and it's tough. It's tough to come on here, Lisa, and say, hey, let's talk about a soccer game. Uh, when all of this is going on. And quite frankly, that seems to be the case coming out of, of camps and, and trainings and media days out of England right now uh, as well. There has been some, as you mentioned, uh, media availability uh, around this game specifically with uh, both teams, both the United States women's national team and England uh, women's national team. And um, what has been in the front of all of this has been the EH report that has dropped. We have heard from uh, Becky Sauerbrunn and Alana Cook, and, and now as recently as this morning, stateside uh, Megan Rapino. And um, these players have echoed the sentiment that persons – who have been in positions of power, whether they be uh, owners, members of ownership, uh, people with roles at the executive level, or U.S. soccer officials uh, should be removed, should be gone, should be removed from their roles um, within, within women's soccer. And um, I think in that very first episode where we were sort of talking about all of this, Lisa, and sort of just sort of running through the first reactions of this report dropping, we had wondered, you know, what those next steps were going to look and or feel like. And while clubs or franchises or U S soccer or the league are navigating those things for themselves, it sounds like the players are making it quite clear what they feel those next steps and accountability should look like and what they should entail. Yeah. I mean, Megan Rapino, uh, one of the voices that um, explicitly calling for uh, accountability, uh, Vlad Kamenovsky and Pino doing media availability actually this morning, right before we went live. Um, but Rapino saying, quote, I don't think Merritt Paulson is fit to be the owner of the Portland Thorns. I don't think Arnim Whistler is fit to be the owner of Chicago and uh, very explicitly stating her, her remarks on that. Um, even in terms of, of talking about the Spanish Federation and the U S heading to Spain to play them in, in just a few days time after this England match saying, um, it, if we show up, we're in support of the players. We're not supporting the Spanish Federation. We, we support the players. And I think that the overwhelming, um, uh, result in the overwhelming like speech from all of these players is that they're supporting one another. They all want change. They are all doing this together arm in arm. Yeah, no, it was a, a lot of, um, a lot of um, vulnerability. We'll just say, I think in, in honesty, you know, from these players, you know, being asked um, or in fielding these questions, you know, by media in, in, in the best way that they can. Um, you know, Crystal Dunn at one point uh, mentioning how, how difficult it is to actually feel joy while yeah. competing um, in the jersey at this moment. Uh, Becky Sauerbrunn opening her media statements um, saying, we're going to be asked about this a lot, so we'll just tell you now. We are not okay. We're not doing well. That the, you know, the team is, is struggling at this moment. Um, and Alana Cook just echoing that, saying that it should not, it should no longer fall on the players. And it just has continued uh, to do that at this point. Um, but Megan Rapino today also giving additional uh, perspective as well, sort of um, looking at the match ahead just a little bit and saying how those types of moments are moments that you really wake up for as a, as a player at this level, the, the, just the idea of, of playing against um, an English side that is really at really peaking at, 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 at their prime right now and doing that on their turf and playing at a, at a facility like um, 
like Wembley is, is something that she is excited for and leaning into um, a bit. So I'm, I am curious um, as to what we will see, um, you know, in terms of the solidarity and support around that match, like leading up, up to the match, Rapino um, has been clear that uh, the biggest platform that the United States has is actually on the pitch. Uh, and that, uh, you know, Lucy Bronze has also uh, spoken out on this as well and has said that, you know, there are ongoing conversations about how these two teams can continue to, sh to show uh, solidarity uh, moving ahead into uh, the game. But um, we will be keeping an eye on that in the lead up to, to kick off. Um, and I'm curious as to, uh, you know, the players who will specifically get to, you know, participate in those things, because typically you have um, two starting 11s take the pitch mm -hmm. um, in, in this game. So let's maybe pivot to that a little bit. What could we possibly see? Who can we see uh, lacing them up come Friday, whether it's for England or the United States? Let's talk uh, about the opposition a little bit, Lisa. There are some updates to the roster players uh, who won't necessarily, you know, be part of, of this big historic game. Yeah. I think um, some of the news dropping from the English side of this in terms of player availability, the, the biggest one coming out, Alicia Russo pulling out of the England squad um, for, for just a small injury, but the, the forward will return back to Manchester United um, and, and rehab there. She actually missed uh, one or two of the last club games that United played. So she pulled out, and then there was no replacement called in. But also Leah Williamson, the captain of the English side, she left camp just the other day due to an injury. Um, so uh, because of that, and, and Lucy Parker also missing out due to injury, there has been some call-ups um, for the English side. But 23 players for the, the England side coming into this camp as, as they also have two matches to get one against the U S and then the Czech Republic as the U S plays against England. And then they go to Spain to play, but there's been a uh, player rotation on both sides of it due to injury um, for, for the United States players. A lot of them competing in the NWSL towards the end of this season. It's a long regular season as they head into the postseason, and, and due to that, some nicks and injuries. We knew Alex Morgan was not called into this camp, Due to injury, Taylor Korniak, a midfielder with the San Diego Wave, initially called in to this roster for Black Wendonofsky, but uh, ruled out due to injury. She was replaced by Racing Louisville rookie Jalen Howell stepping into the roster. And then most recently, Mallory Pugh um, ruled out of the friendlies um, just the other day. And Pugh will not be replaced. So 23 players for both sides heading into this, this fixture that is tomorrow night. At Wembley, I think the the vibes around Wembley are um, it's it's electric for both sides. Even in these these press conferences, despite all the somber conversation about somber and serious conversation about the investigations into U.S. soccer and the NWSL, even Megan Rapino stating like this is one of the biggest games. This is one of the biggest friendlies because it's a sold out friendly at Wembley, not on American soil. World champions against European champions. This is a huge match. This is a huge yeah. match. Yeah, I think I think in terms of like it's a it's a big match in terms of like the event that it is, mm -hmm. you know, like in the timing of it, you've got, you know, USA coming off of, of their CONCACAF W championship. You've got England coming off of their Euros championship, uh, World Cup qualification secured. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny to think at one point this game was still a little bit it's slightly in limbo. Right. They announced the date for it, but they said it would be determined on whether or not England's September qualification matches, um, you know, went the way they had planned and it did, thankfully. So, uh, yes, I would agree that it's that it's big in terms of the event and magnitude of it. Um, but obviously, with all of the current news and reporting um, around uh, women's soccer in the United States, it has a little bit of, I think, of, of a different um, heavy emphasis on actual results. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've been hearing that is a little bit, it's it's much more different than what we, uh, than I think people were anticipating 
just a few months before. People were looking at this as 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 like a measuring bar, as as a level um, that there was going to be the opportunity to sort of you know size up these two teams against each other. Uh, I know for me personally, as someone in the space covering it, uh, I personally have a little bit less emphasis uh, emphasis on that. Um, I'm not about to be out here. Um, you know, heavily critiquing a player's performance in light of having to be re-traumatized yeah. uh, by something. Uh, so I think hearing that specifically from these players, hearing that from uh, the coaching staff and Vlako Andonovsky uh, as well, um, it's been repeated a few times over these last two media availabilities that there is far less of an emphasis on the results in this game. And it very much is going to be about the experience and the opportunity in front of them. So with that being said, though, uh, talking a little bit about this, knowing who's going to be available and knowing who's not going to be available, Lisa, I think it's time to maybe put a little bit of a wish list together. What would you maybe like to see out of this game on the United States side? I think I know I've already said uh, I think it's, it's Trinity Rodman's time to shine. How about you? What do you think? I sure hope it's it's Rodman's time to shine because when you look at the the forward group and even the midfield group for this U.S. side, um, it's definitely not as deep as it was maybe heading into the CONCACAF W Championship where we didn't see Rodman get significant minutes or, or rally really minutes at all. Um, so without Pew, without Alex Morgan, um, there's still Ashley Hatch, Megan Rapino, Trinity Rodman, Sophia Smith, and then Alyssa Thompson, the the 17-year-old high schooler coming into this one. But when, when you look at that front line, of course, we, we've talked about Rose Lavelle putting her into that front line. Ashley Sanchez can play deeper 10 role or, or withheld nine role. I think we could see that rotation coming in. Uh, but between this front line, I hope Rodman gets significant minutes as well. Um, but it, I think Hatch, as really the true number nine in this scenario, is a little bit interesting because it's not the same number nine that an Alex Morgan would play. I could even see Sophia Smith playing in the nine um, in this front line for Black Wanonofsky because she can play that role with Rodman out on the wing. So, so maybe... Maybe a Megan Rapino, Sophia Smith, Trinity Rodman front line with Smith in the middle, Rodman out right and Pino out left. I could see that as a starting 11. I think in the midfield, when we look at some of the the other players brought in with Coffee and DeMello, um, I hope Coffee gets time. She she deserves it. She played in the CONCACAF W Championship. She's done incredibly well for Portland. I think this is a player that you continuously bring in, and if you want her to be part of the fold, you give her significant minutes. Um, but but that's that's my front line prediction to start it. We'll see about Megan Rapino that that that's she could be a a, 50, a 75th minute sub coming in off the bench. But I think it'll be Pino Smith and Rodman up front to start. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't I don't disagree um, with any of that. I, I think um, while I'm while I'm eager to to see Rodman against a team like England, which I anticipate that we will, I just don't know if it's going to be. Um, over the course of a full 90 minutes or off the bench, quite frankly. Um, and I'm not um, really swayed one way or the other. I just would like to see <laughs> it, period. You know, that's just sort of where I'm at <laughs> on it. Um, and I guess maybe I should edit that. Like maybe like I want to see it and I want to see a good chunk of time. I don't want to see like Rodman yeah. come in and, and close out like, you know, four minutes of stoppage time. That I don't yeah. want to see. I mean, um, getting the start for her though, like that's that's pretty big. It it hasn't been done consistently under Vlachwanovsky. So if, but but when you look at someone, uh, the comparison between a Rodman and a Thompson, I think Rodman deserves it over Thompson. But I still want to see Thompson get time. The why bring her in if you're not going to give her time, especially against the European champions? Yeah, no, I mean it's it's something to to think about or sort of you know um, highlight a little bit going going into this match but you know even with with the back line too like I think I think it's always exciting to to get the chance to to um think about which attackers are, are gonna get you know the the star or the time in a in a big game like this um but I think defensively too is is there's a lot of oh, excitement yeah. around that as well I mean like uh what are we like are we gonna see Cook are we gonna see Girma 
you know, handling things in that center back duo against England. And if they do, how, how will they fare against them? Um, somebody like a Sofia Huerta, you know, getting the opportunity against, uh, you know, England's uh, team, you know, there's, it's tough, you know, sort of trying to nail down their attackers as well. Um, and being able to sort of see how uh, she embraces that that type of challenge because she is typically uh, that we've been seeing her as a typical fullback that they want they want to see her getting higher into the attack. Yeah. So how are they going? How is she going to be handling um, you know a, a game like that? And I think a big question mark is Crystal Dunn. She's back on the roster. Yeah. Um, I don't think she'll get a start against England. Um, just kind of getting back into the fold. I think we'll see Emily Fox in that left back position, but I hope Dunn gets time in this first match. And if she's playing in the left back role, I hope we we see it in this one. If she's playing elsewhere on the field, I mean, that's TV, TBD. That'll be determined when when she subs in for maybe a more of an attacking player and we see that rotation, but I doubt it. I, I think Fox will get the start in the back line. I frankly would love to see Naomi Gurma and, and Sauerbrunn get the start against England. It's no knock against Alana Cook. I just think that in domestic play, Naomi Gurma has been phenomenal, phenomenal, outplaying um, veterans in this league, outplaying anyone that comes against her defensively, being able to stop um, any team, any opponent that that San Diego has faced. So I would really love to see a back line of Fox, Germa, Sauerbrunn, and then Sofia Huerta on the right. Um, not sure about Haley Mace, if she'll get too many minutes in this, maybe, maybe at the end of game, seeing that rotation. But that's my prediction for a starting back line in this one. When you're looking at um, maybe a, a prediction in this mm -hmm. one, let's have some fun with it. Uh, there's there isn't a heavy emphasis on result right now. Yeah, but sometimes things change for a player once that whistle goes off. So I, I still mean, think of course I still they want to win, win. despite yeah. there not being a, a yes. The players are saying that Black Wendonowski is saying that there's not a huge emphasis on a result. I think that means that we're going to see more player rotation, maybe 45 minutes for each player and not waiting until the 70th or 80th minute, but just getting players minutes, just getting the minutes at this level. But once you step on the field, yeah, it's game over. You want to win. You want to. You want to do everything you can to win. These are professional athletes. They're competitors. They they want to score. They want to keep shutouts. And they want to win games no matter what they say. All right. All right. I mean, listen, uh, we, we've shown we've shown a lot of love to, to the front line, what we want to see there. We've shown a lot of love to the back line and what maybe we want to see uh defensively uh is there anything in, in that middle third that you're going to be keeping an eye on in, in this match tomorrow I, I believe that we will see Haran Lavelle Sullivan get the start I think he's going to stick with old faithful maybe we'll see coffee slot in for Sullivan I would like to see that rotation but um I, I want to see coffee get significant minutes in this because I think she is the future defensive midfield of this U.S. team um I'm not so sure about Savannah DeMello, but Ashley Sanchez, she's the future as well. If if they if Black Wanonofsky can get Coffee and Sanchez on the pitch at the same time in the midfield, perhaps with a Rose. I love the Rose Lavelle Ashley Sanchez combination, but that could that could leave a lot of exposure and a lot of pressure on Coffee uh defensively. But that's that's what I want to see between those three. But um who knows if we'll see Christy Mewis at the six again. You never know about that one, but I really do want to see Coffee get significant minutes and Ashley Sanchez. Yeah, I'm with you as well. I I, I think um, we're gonna see that combination of, of Lavelle. We're gonna mm -hmm. see Haran and, and Sullivan. This is, uh, I think, at the moment, for the moment, this is Lacko's perhaps his ideal kind of, of middle middle three, and we'll see. Um, uh, quite frankly, I would like to see it again. I think Rose Lavelle has done quite well against yeah. <laughs> England's yeah. national team, yeah. and uh, I would love I would love to see her have a another massive massive game in front of a big big crowd. Um, but and a big uh, crowd not in particularly in favor of the United oh, yeah. States. That's what I think is going to be a huge test, and that's really why I want to see so many of these um, inexperienced players get significant caps because it's one thing to go into a, a roaring stadium in Washington D.C. that's um, all U.S. fans and and maybe has five percent of the opposition's fans cheering for you, but yeah. for an experience like this, for a, a rookie like Sam Coffey, Demello, um, even Ashley Sanchez, who's played on big stages but but not quite this big, and and Trinity Rodman, when 
um, yes, they're excited for these players, the fans are, but they're not cheering for them. They're, they're rooting for their home England squad. And I think that's going to be a huge test for this team. Yeah, I think that's um, that was part of the the challenge, right? And sort of setting up um, setting up these games that that was the opportunity that this program was looking for, and they're going to get it. Uh, Webley Stadium is no small facility. They're anticipating a near sellout or sellout crowd at this match, and you get to watch it all tomorrow on Friday, October the seventh. It's going to be uh, a mid afternoon game, so three p.m. Eastern kickoff. Find a spot to watch it if you can. Ooh. You know, England, England prime time, but stateside early afternoon. So make sure you find a good spot to uh, to check it out. Lisa and I, of course, will uh, eventually recap the match uh, and, and all of the good stuff uh, that comes out of it. Um, we want to thank everybody for joining us today.